The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Georgie Walker, and I'm the training manager here at Caseway UK. And uh, today I'm joined by my colleague, Anthony Launchbury, who's a training consultant here. And um, Anthony is going to be presenting today's webinar. During the webinar, uh, we, we will be focusing on the creation of lead schedules, uh, the properties and the document library. Um, and we're going to be covering a number of common queries that are logged with our support team. Uh, this is an intermediate level webinar and it's aimed at more experienced users of Caseware rather than newer users. If you are a new user watching this webinar and um, you've got questions sort of surrounding the, the um, document manager and the lead schedules, we've got lots of helpful articles on our knowledge base that you can access after this webinar. Before I hand over to Tony, I'm just going to run through a couple of housekeeping items. Um, if you've got any questions today, um, please can you type them into the questions section on the GoToWebinar screen rather than using the hand raising feature. Um, there will be a Q&A session at the end of the webinar and uh, we'll try and include as many of your questions that you post um, in, in the uh, questions panel in that Q&A session. If we don't manage to cover your question um, during that session, we will publish uh, the Q&A document along with a recording of this webinar on the Caseware knowledge base and that should be available on, on Monday for you and you should receive an email with a link to that recording. So I'm just going to hand over to Tony to take you through the presentation. Thanks Georgie. Uh, good, good afternoon everyone and welcome to this lead schedule webinar. Uh, my name is Anthony and I'll just be going to be running through uh, the next half an hour, 40 minutes with you guys, uh, just showing you a few areas of lead schedules and groupings and so on. Um, to help us through it, we've got some key areas that we're going to be focusing on uh, for the webinar. So what we do is we just run through those key areas. Um, first of all is uh, building and accessing, accessing lead schedules. Now Georgie mentioned this is an intermediate uh, webinar. At uh, the start here, we're going to start off a little bit lighter um, just to ease us into it and plus it will uh, lead through to a few other areas that we're going to be focusing on. Then we're going to be looking at customizing lead schedule properties. Uh, simply here, we've got a couple of uh, example documents that we can go through and edit and change and modify. Uh, we're going to look at aspects for audit and also through group accounts. Okay. Then we're going to be looking at groupings and lead schedule flips. Now, we've touched on groupings previously uh, in another webinar, uh, just lightly. Now, groupings are responsible for driving the information within our lead schedules. So we're going to look at how those groupings are set up, how they drive information to our lead schedules, and how potentially we can edit them uh, to build more detail into our lead schedules if we require. Uh, the flips are the same as the map number flips. So if one year is a debit, uh, next year is a credit, then the flips will change the uh, change where it populates within those lead schedules for us. Then we're going to have a look at document library. Uh, hopefully some of you guys have already been using the document library, especially if you're audit users, uh, audit advanced users. I imagine you've already been uh, in and out of the company audits document library there, but we'll have a little touch on there uh, and also talk about custom content. And then, as Georgie mentioned earlier, we'll be moving on to a Q&A session at the end. Uh, this is planned to last for about five minutes, uh, give or take, depending on what time we have and obviously what questions uh, you guys have been entering to that uh, GoToWebinar question field um, on the right side of your screen. Okay, so the first area we're going to start off with then is building and accessing lead schedules. Now, what we have within Caseware is certain structures already set up for us. Uh, here we have HAT, uh, HAT, Mercia being our main structures that we'll be using, uh, but they're also available uh, is a Kestrin and a PCAST structure that we can build into our files as well. Now, what I'm going to do quickly is we can jump into a pre-built file. So here is my pre-built file, should be popping onto your screens now. Um, as before, we could really see that the, the accounts have already been built, there's already been some work on it because we've got the key financial data, uh, but what we do is we get to the documents manager by selecting the documents button. Now, in your, say, your accounts advance files or, say, your charity files, that you don't necessarily uh, start off with your lead schedules. Uh, perhaps someone's already built the file for you uh, and you already had them there. 
but as and when you first create a file, you don't have those lead schedules um, within the Documents Manager. What you will start off with is just the Accounts folder and the certain documents. Um, this is slightly different to the Audit Advanced template, which we'll go over later. Uh, but really, the first thing, first thing to do when you create files, uh, if you want to start working on those lead schedules, is to access your wizard document. So you can either access the wizard from here, or as most of you would already know, from the wizard button on your digital dashboard. That will open up a case view instance. Um, in this case, when this loads up, we've already gone through and completed all the data today. Um, the only thing we haven't done is selected our referencing structure. Now, when we use the drop down here, we'll have four available options. We can have Kestrian, PCAS, Mercia and HAT, uh, which I just mentioned a moment ago within the slide. All we need to do is select in our referencing structure. So in this case, I'm going to select Mercia. And from here underneath, uh, just again, just to make sure you are aware, there is an add button. Uh, so just by selecting Mercia here, as you can see when I jump back into documents, it doesn't populate anything. We do need to make sure we select that add button. Uh, we'll see the loading symbol on the screen. And, and that should be done. Now, as soon as that loading symbol is cleared, uh, the lead schedule should be there. Um, if you've already built in the lead schedules before, if you select the Add button again, you'll get this message pop up on the screen. Uh, so this message is simply saying they've already run this process. Uh, and we've already got our lead schedules in there. If we want, want to build any different lead schedules, what we need to do is go back to the Document Manager, delete the lead schedules that have been built, then come back here maybe change from Mercia to HAT, and then select Add again, okay? So I was gonna press OK here, and jump back into File 1. So back into this file, we can see now we've got a new folder, which is our Lee Schedules folder. So I can use the arrow here to expand it, and we'll see lots of documents. Well, these ones are automatic documents with this little symbol that we can see. And there'll be lots of documents for us to work through. Now, as I mentioned, the audit advanced template is slightly different. So what I'll do is just open up my audit file. Okay, so audit file should now be on the screen for you to view. Um, what we'll see here is when we go to documents, uh, this accounts folder is already here in this case because it's been built in. However, when you were to create a file from scratch, let that load what you'll see is you should just have the assurance folder at the top because uh, all the audit advanced files or templates come pre-populated with the, say, the Mercia checklists or the HAT checklists. For us to build in the accounts documents, what you'd need to do is go to the digital dashboard. You'd see an area called engagement setup, select engagement setup, and then we can simply select the build accounts advanced documents in. Uh, once we set build here, that's the, the button that will run a routine and build the accounts advanced, or the accounts documents and wizards and so forth into our document manager. Okay, so uh, both slightly different. One starts with the lead schedules, uh, one starts with the accounts. So you may need to add those in, but depending on what file you're working on. Okay, so just a quick start, just to show you guys where to build those lead schedules in. Now, next, what we're gonna be doing is really get into the meat of the webinar and start looking at customizing uh, lead schedule properties. Now, I'd imagine some people on the webinar have already had a look at what kind of, had to play around with some of the settings within these documents. Now, from the lead schedules, we can simply go through and we can create multiple different lead schedules. Uh, we can tailor them for our needs, um, which we'll go through now. We'll start looking at, say, maybe a trial balance. So if I go back into our file. Okay, so she back into this file. Now this is the accounts of ours file that we started off on. And what we'll do is it's going to scroll down and we'll scroll down to the end trial balance. So N is the reference for trial balance in Mercia. And we can see here that we've just got our N1.1. Now to change the settings for this document, uh, you've got two ways of accessing the settings. You can right click on the title and go to properties. And that will open up the, the general tab. That's where you'll start off with, um, where we've got some a few areas in here, which I'll go through in a moment. Or what you can do is you can double click into the trial balance itself. And you can right click here on the side within the white space. And again, you can access the properties. If you are gonna be tailoring these lead schedules, it's 
probably going to be easier for you to uh, look at these properties whilst you're looking at the document because uh, then as and when we change the setting here you can obviously see uh, what's reflecting on the screen straight away uh, rather than having to go back in and out okay so what we've got here from the general tab first of all we can go through and change that reference number uh, we can change it to anything we like as long as that reference doesn't already exist within our documents manager name again we can type in text here quite freely underneath this is we've got document types now we're going to play around with a different document type a bit later on uh, but there are quite a few on here for us to choose as we scroll up here you've got some journal types uh, there'll be issues and so on general ledger type document types that we can uh, start off with on the right hand side we've got our format so this is looking at either account balances the final balances maybe it's looking at balances within a group structure. Uh, so these are all options that we may need to select as, depending upon what document we are looking at. Underneath we've got some options. Uh, these are actually quite handy. Uh, retain, lock, uh, lockdown, retain on cleanup, include an index, roll forward and so on. Um, so as and when we are creating these lead schedules, uh, do we want them to roll forward? More likely yes, so make sure the tick is within the box. Well, maybe if it's an issues document showing all issues on the file, maybe we don't want that to be retained on cleanup because we don't want to show any issues at the end of our audit. So maybe in that case, you'd untick it. Underneath, we've got some additional settings. Uh, first one is selecting the period. Uh, so by default, it will always be selected as current period, but we can change that if we want to. Accounts, we have the choice between financial, cash flow, performance. Uh, these are areas that we'll find, or tabs we'll find within our trial balance. Uh, which I'll show you a bit later on. Order, uh, this is going to be the order of the pop or how this document populates. So we can populate by groupings. So groupings are here. So from group 10 here to LS Kestrian, there'll be your groupings. But we can also populate certain documents by map numbers instead, uh, which might be quite handy uh, for your trial balances. So what I'll do here is I'm just going to select map number and select OK. You'll see as soon as I do that, you get a, well, I've got a map number column on the right hand side here. Um, it's probably not the location I'd want that map number column on. Uh, I'd probably want to go through and move that slightly. So very much like the trial balance in the documents manager, we can go to view and reorder columns and I can move that map code right to the top of the list if I wish to. So it's underneath the account number. So I can press OK. So when you are using these lead schedules, uh, don't think that you need to stick with the case where designated order. Uh, you can tailor the columns and put them in the order that's best fit for yourselves. Okay. What I'm going to do now is just turn off that map number column. <coughs> the reason being is because our best practice would be to kind of re not recommend you to tailor the lead schedules uh, generated by caseware. So here you can see that I've changed it from account to map number. We'd probably recommend you not do that within the case where lead schedules. Uh, instead, what we'd suggest that you do is create potentially your own trial balance document. So I'm just going to change this back to default, select OK. The reason being is just in case you do select the wrong setting, you don't know how to revert it back to default, um, then you would always have this original one there. So what I'm going to do is to close this screen and go back to my trial balance here. And if I wanted to modify or create my own TB, what I'd suggest you do is find a trial balance document first of all, right click, select copy, then right click and paste. That will drop a document underneath uh, the same title, trial balance, different reference though this time of M1.2. And what I would say is we probably should start off by trying to edit this one instead. So I'm just going to double click to open that trial balance. Now, what might be useful is if you have a trial balance that we can select multi years. So the standard TB will just show the current year position and the prior year position, but maybe if you've got five years worth of data there, you'd want to see a multi year TB. So what you can do is right click within a white space, go to properties. From properties here, on the right hand side, we didn't show this earlier, but we've got a balances. So on this balances, it shows active and prior. If I use the drop down, you'll see we get a few other selections. Uh, if you're using budgets or forecasts, we can use one of these selections here, or I'm just going to use the five-year option, change it to five-year, and select OK. As soon as you do that, you can see again, we've got five years now, so we've got our 2016, 2015, 14, and so on. Okay, um, The same way as I reeled the column earlier for the map number, 
we could reorder these if we want to. Uh, you could also right click within this row here and you'd see that you've got the option to reorder columns if you want to. Uh, you could also go through and if you don't like the percentage change, you can right click and go, there we go, there we go. So you should be, here we go, high percentage change. So you could change, you could take them further. Uh, if you want to make it a little bit clearer, you can remove those from the TB. Okay. So first of all, if you are going to tailor these, what we'd suggest is that you go back, you make a copy and change it here. This document, to make it a little bit clearer, rather than the same trial balance, what I'll do is change the properties just to say multi-year and select OK, uh, just to make it a little bit clearer for users within the Documents Manager. Now, what you also get for trial balance documents, uh, as you'll see from the properties, is we have the option here to have consolidated or so group documents. Um, this file is a single entity, so what I'll do is I'll quickly set it up so it is a, uh, oh, it's a group. So I'm just going to go to engagement, consolidate, and it's just going to go through and add in a new sub. So I'm going to call this sub one. I'm going to link it to an existing file. So it's going to go through and link that to an existing file that I've got on my desktop. Okay, I'm not going to worry about any of these settings today. Uh, if you do want any information on how to set up groups, then please have a look at our knowledge base. There's quite a few articles on there and a quick vid that will show you how to do this. So I'm just going to press OK. And again, press OK. Ooh, case view document open, so we'll close that down. Just remember, you can't have the case view document open whilst you are set up consolidation. There we go. Soon as I've done that now, we should be able to press OK. File all these schedules is compressed. Do you want to uncompress it? You can say yes to that. That broken symbol there should then be removed. And just to check our trial balance, make sure we have got the TB in there. Yep, there's our sub one. And then there's a file parent. Perfect. Okay, so back into my document sim. If I want to set up a trial balance for, say, example, an eliminating TV, again, we'd suggest you take a copy of the trial balance document, uh, the standard one provided by Caseware. So right-click, copy, and then just underneath here, we'll paste it that in. Again, I'm going to open up the trial balance, so double-click to open up. Um, first thing we'll do then is rename this document. So right-click and properties. And we'll change that to perfect. Right, so once we've got this here, then again, there's a few other options we want to have a look at. Um, if we go down, let's drag this over to the right side, we've got balance type here. So if we went down to balance type, we are selected as reports, but if we change that to consolidated, and we also want to go through and select the consolidated view here, now, the order is set up to be on the account number basis. Again, we could change that if we want to, but for today, I'll, I'll keep, leave that as it is, and I'll press OK. Now, what we should be seeing here is an error pop-up, which we have. Now, the reason why we've had the error pop-up is, and it says it quite clearly, is that we haven't got an abbreviation for one of the entities within our file. So, a really important part of when you're looking at consolidations is to set up an abbreviation for each entity. So, Caseware can clearly identify on the lead schedules uh, what entity, what, what balance relates to what entity. So, back into Consolidate quickly. I see here that obviously we've got the S1 abbreviation for our sub, but it's our parent that's the problem. So, I'm going to go in, highlight it, press properties, and just put an abbreviation in here. I was going to put UP for ultimate parent, and then just put one at the end. As soon as I press OK here, and then OK again, this, this document should then go through and populate for us. Uh, as you can see here, we've got our UP1 and our S1, so parent and our sub. Again, like the other lead schedules I showed you earlier, we can right click, we can reorder these columns in case you want the sub to be before the parent or so forth. You can move those around quite easily on here. Now, within these documents here as well for groups, what we can do is within these files, we can set up a lead schedule trial balance for each of these sub, uh, subsidiaries or the parent entity. But if you right click within the documents, we can select properties and over here on the context, 
we'll be able to select the entity that we want to populate the trial bands for. So if we wanted to just to populate the sub one, we can select sub one there, press OK, and then you'd have a trial bands solely uh, pointing at that subsidiary one uh, data. Okay, so you can set one of these trial balances up for each sub uh, as you see fit. Okay, so that's all we're going to have a look at on these schedules uh, for now. If you do have any questions on these schedules, uh, then please feel free to just pop those questions within the question field on your GoToWebinar app. The next thing that we're going to be looking at will be groupings and the schedule flips. Okay, so for groupings and the schedule flips, we're going to have a look at the yeah, we're going to start looking at the audit file, so that second file we looked at. Uh, so what we'll do is, let's going to go through and open that file quickly. Okay, so you should all now hopefully see uh, the file on your screen. It's going to tidy up the document manager a little bit. So to tidy these folders up, if you just go to the little down arrow, hold down shift and left click, there you go, you can see them all grouped together a little bit better. Perfect. Right, so groupings, um, <clears throat> what groupings are? They, they populate these lead schedules, okay? Uh, every time we bring our trial balance into Caseware, so every time we bring our financial data in, we assign it with a map number. Now, within these map number properties, um, which I'll show you in a moment, there's groupings that are associated with them. Now, we can also view the linked groupings uh, on the trial balance by selecting the groupings tab over here. Now, if we scroll down a little bit, you'll see a few groupings already placed, so freehold property. So I'd expect to see freehold pop property populate within the C2. Um, if it's, for any reason, a negative balance, then we should be looking at Schedule F, okay, uh, within the F section. So these, sorry, um, these groupings are set up for us. Now, not in every single case will they populate in exactly the way we'll want them, because uh, it depends on how we bring that data in, how that de uh, data is analyzed within your trial balance. So let me go through and just show you our assigned mapping screen quickly. So if we go down to our assigned mapping, and here we've got tax due to HMRC. Now, we touched on VAT within a previous webinar uh, when we're looking at map flips uh, and map numbers and how they're treated. So if we use the same example, here's our VAT control account. So if we right-clicked, we went to properties, we would see the, the mapping properties. So if this balance was a credit balance, it would go to D11, 0200001. However, if it wasn't a credit, if it was a debit instead, it would go to C0204-0071, which if we see there is VAT repayable. Now, the groupings work in a, a very similar way. Uh, you have two tabs for your groupings that are associated to this map number. So we've got our group one to five and our group six to 10. Now, if I go to group one to five quickly, first group here, we've, we've got Kestrum. Uh, then we have group two, which is PCAS, group three, Mercia, down to group five, which isn't used within uh, the accounts of ours template. But you can see here, here's my Mercia. Uh, my lead schedule here is J2. So any any fat figures that are credit balance should be going through to my J2 social security and other taxes section of the, the creditors uh, lead schedule. If the balance relates uh, to VAT it turns out to be a debtor, then then that in that case, it should be going through to our other debtors H2 schedule, okay? Now, if I press OK here and expand this map number to see what's mapped to it, we can see that we've got three different uh, nominal accounts. So we've got our VAT liability, we've got our VAT repayable, and we've also got our VAT receivables. So we've got two credit balances, one for 75,000, one for 2.3 million, and we've got debit balance for 2.2. Now, the way this is set up, case where uh, expects to see that you've got one balance per VAT account. So where I've got three accounts here, which I've probably got there to make the reconciliation a little bit easier, Caseware is going to treat these separately. Okay. So if I show you the end result of these postings, let's go to my documents quickly, and we'll scroll down. First of all, we'll look at our H for our debtors. Okay, so here's my more do you more than one year okay here's within one year so if I double click on h2.2d 
you'll see here that we've got VAT repayables and you can see that 2.2 million sitting within the lease schedule. Okay, so I don't really want that to be sitting there separately away from the VAT liability uh, and obviously the receivables figure. If I just go back to my document manager, uh, we'll go down to our J section. Here's my creditors folder. And within here, then I've got my J2D, which is my creditors, creditors due within one year. So we'll open it up. Uh, and here we can see the, the other two balances relating to that VAT account. So what we really want here is to leave the 2.2 million also to be populating here and netting off to that final VAT liability. Um, now, there are two ways about this. Um, the, the first one, uh, again, if you're newer to Caseware, might be the better option, uh, would be to go probably through to your trial balance, have a look at those account codes for VAT and say, okay, maybe the best solution here is to transfer the 2.2 million and the 2.3 million all up to this account B07, uh, 087, sorry, by way of using an adjusting entry. Uh, that would be a nice, clean way to do it. Um, if for, for whatever reason you want to keep the trial balance to reflect exactly what the client's given you uh, to make it easier for you to report and you don't want to journal uh, these amounts into just a single VAT liability, what you guys can do is amend the groupings. Now, if you went through to the assigned mapping screen like I showed you a moment ago and you went down to D11, you expanded the VAT map codes and you right clicked here and went to properties, and you changed, say, this property here uh, for the grouping, the flip grouping for Mercia, then that wouldn't have any effect on your TB at that point. That would only have any effect on any new account codes that you mapped as and when you brought them into Caseware. So don't don't come here to change the the, the groupings uh, on the trial balance. What we want to do is cancel here. We want to go to our trial balance, uh, and ideally, we want to build in some additional columns into this trial balance. So, if you guys watch the uh, webinar on trial balance errors, then you'd know just to right-click within this banner. Uh, you can go to reorder columns, and you can just find these two groupings for Mercia, which will be LS Mercia and LS Mercia Flip. So, I'm just going to highlight both of those and drag those over, or use the arrow to move them over. Now, I just want to move them up the top, really. Ideally, I'd want them to place around the map number column. So, I'm just going to highlight those two. Use the app up arrow. A few more clicks. And then once I'm happy with the location, just press OK. So, this will show you the, the groupings that have been applied to the account numbers on the face of the trial balance, uh, which gives us access to easy edit individual account codes without going into the default settings for the groupings and changing the, the groupings overall. So, anything I change here will only affect the settings for that individual row. Uh, so, again, that allows you to keep the groupings uh, as set by case where available for the rest of your file. So, all we want to do here is we want to move the VAT payables from populating within the H schedule and we want to make sure it populates within this J schedule. So if I just simply put my mouse cursor within the cell and clear that down using backspace, what we'll see once we go back to the document manager and we open up our debtors, so we go to my debtors first, so H2.2D. You'll see just a little bit of a flicker there on the screen where you can see the VAT receivables was just moved. Um, so you can see the balance now is cleared from here. If I go back to my document manager and load up my, there we go, creditors due within one year schedule, you'll see now that 2.2 million is populated within the lease schedule. Uh, and we've got the net effect of uh, leaving that as 211,000 uh, VAT liability. So, <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, that's how we can go through and change and edit the, the groupings to populate the lease schedules. Obviously, with that knowledge, you could go through and start building more detail within lease schedules and so on. So that's what we're going to move on to now. What we'll do is we'll have a look at uh, a very audit-specific document, the B32 FSA, just to show you how you can build more detail into it. Before we do that, though, I'm just going to go back to the trial balance. Um, now, the groupings I showed you earlier, we have got multiple groupings, so we've got Kestrian, PCAS, Mercia, HAT, so that's group one through to four, but we've also got a few other groups there, five all the way through to ten. Um, for the audit advanced templates, uh, the Mercia audit advanced template, 
we only use really uh, will be group three there and group six. Uh, group six is specifically uh, there to populate the B32 FSA document. So what I'll do is I'm saying jump to my documents and scan up to the planning quickly and expand open my B32 FSA. So it takes just a quick moment to load up. When it does load up, what we'll see on the left-hand side, and for the people that aren't familiar with it, uh, will be our, our group numbers, which are our financial areas. Now, you should probably recognize this from looking at the screen a moment ago. These group numbers are the group six references you saw within your trial balance. So back to groupings would be this group six here. Okay. So if for, it, for any reason we wanted to build some more detail onto this B32 FSA, uh, for example, debtors here, um, debtors here will have a few other figures in it. It won't just be trade receivables. So if I double click, uh, we've got our debtors control account and we've got our prepayments. Um, and looking at the materiality figures here, obviously our prepayments is well below our materiality. So it might be some detail that you might, might want to build onto the FSA just to make it clear to your staff or, or within the planning area that we don't need to look at really prepayments too much because it's, it's well below our materiality levels for overall and performance. So what we could do if we liked, we could build in a separate row here uh, showing that prepayments is clearly below our materiality just to make sure people don't look at it within an audit. So what I'll do is I'll just close this screen down and we'll go back to our case so file. So to create a new grouping, what we can do here is first of all, we'll find our prepayments. So this is our prepayments row. You can see there it's populated within H2, which is our debtors. And from here, we can just use the little down arrow next to H2. That will open up a little dialog window. From here, we can either select a grouping, we can create a new one, we can edit the, the group properties by selecting properties and cancel the screen and help so on. So what we want to do here is create a new grouping. So I'll select on new. Uh, group number, I'll use H3 just because it's the next one in the sequence and we'll call this prepayments. Don't worry about any of the other details below for now. We can select OK. Um, if you do want to change any of the details like reference or name, we can always select properties to return to that screen, okay? So what I'll do here is I'll just select the select button. Once we do that, you'll see my group six now has been updated, so I've got H3 there. So now when I go back into that B32 FSA, we could get that to pop that row to populate within the table. Now, as you can see here, it doesn't populate automatically, okay? We won't have that H3 in there automatically. What we'll need to do is refresh the document. So we can go up to the toolbar, click on the refresh icon. This will update the planning balance. So I'll see in this file, we've already prepared, we've already uh, completed a little bit of planning. Um, it depends on what stage of the planning you are. If you did select, do, do you want to continue? Your planning balance column here will also be updated with any figures. So if you've already done some work, uh, then be careful because you could be overwriting some of these planning balance figures. Ideally, really, you should be doing this quite early on. So what I'll do is I'll select yes to continue, finalizing the list, and then you can't see H3 there just yet. That's because Caseware will put it to the top of the list. It will give it a new little icon there to let us know that it's a new area within our field. Uh, we haven't got a tick within our materiality assessment. As, as we know, it's well below the materiality level set. Um, but again, you could go through, look at the assertions, you can annotate and so on. You can build a little bit more detail into this document and make it a little bit more powerful, okay? To get the H3 so it's in alphabetical order, uh, all you want to do is make sure you scroll to the top of the screen, so where I am now, and then just double click on group number. And then once that's loaded, double click again, and then we'll scroll down and you'll see that you've got H3 uh, just underneath the debtors now. So it's still going to fall within the same work program, the H work program, uh, but it just allows us to build a bit more detail within this lead schedule. So you guys can go through, you can tailor these, you can build detail in as, as required on a job by job basis. Okay. So hopefully that was helpful. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at the document library. So the document library here, uh, you'll access by using this symbol. Uh, so 
that symbol there that just popped up. So the filing cabinet with the plus button. Um, we have got a poll for this because we're quite interested to see how many of our users actually use the document library. So hopefully that should be popping up on your screen now. So if you don't mind just spending a few seconds, uh, 30 seconds or so, just completing that, let us know if you've used the document library or not. Okay, thank you everybody uh, for completing the poll. So um, just having a look at the results here, we've got 59% saying no, that you're not using the document library. Um, 33 of you saying that you're using the standard document library. 2% uh, using the custom document library. So hopefully um, the details that Tony's going to run through with you will be of interest to everybody. Um, and 7% of you using both. So that's, that's good. It's good to see that... Uh, um, a number of you are using this and those of you who aren't, hopefully uh, you'll be able to see the benefits of that uh, shortly. So I'm just going to hand back over to Tony now to carry on with the presentation. Perfect. Thank you, Georgie. All right. So, yeah, it's quite interesting to see, uh, see quite, quite a few are, a few of you are using the, the standard document library. That's good. Um, Document libraries that you have available will depend upon what templates you have installed on your machine. So if you're using the Audit Advanced Mercia template, you have a company audit library. If you're using HAT, you have a HAT library. Um, but as George mentioned, we can we can also create our own custom content libraries, um, which are quite a good option at, at firm level, really, to make sure we've got certain documents available to each member of staff uh, that they may need whilst progressing through any engagement. So the kind of documents that you can have will be the standard lead schedules within Caseware. So the lead schedules like earlier, we looked at the trial balance and modifying that for group. Well, to be honest, unless you're looking at changing those settings uh, quite frequently, uh, imagine most of you would have to look at an article to see how to set those documents up. So it might be more time saving to set those documents up place them within a document library uh, and that way you don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time. Next, the other type of documents you can add in there are say Word, Excel and Adobe documents. So Adobe for any guidance documents you want staff to have, Word for say management letters that you want people to use as a template, Excel for any say TFA schedules that you might want to have, uh, pro formas available for each member of staff to obviously carry out that accounts work. So the document library can be quite useful. Uh, what we do is we'll just jump back into the a caseware file so I can show you those. Now, here we go. So back on the document manager, again, I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit so we don't need to see everything. Um, to access your document library, uh, you'll go, first of all, on your toolbar up to document, select document, and then you'll see the library icon uh, that was just on the slide a moment ago. Now, if you were to select the drop down below, it would say, okay, would you like to open up the company audit library, the default document library, or the hat working papers one? Now, what you could do is just select the library button itself, and that will open up the document library screen, where we can again select each one of those libraries that are available. Now, mine's on the company audit one. So we'll start off there. Uh, quite simply, if you haven't used the document library before, all you do is very similar to File Explorer. If you want to build one of these documents within your Documents Manager, you just literally grab it and drag it over. Uh, where that black line is, is where that document will be placed. So if I was to let go now, <clears throat> you'll see that it's being placed in there, Financial Statements Placeholder. It's actually re-referenced it to A12, simply because there's already an A11 within my file, so it will go to the next available reference, okay? Now, they're quite handy for obviously building documentation back into our files. Um, <clears throat> There is something to be careful of, obviously, version numbers, uh, which we'll probably go through in another webinar where we're looking at company audit version 16 or 18. But some of you may want to go through and add documents to these. Now, I'm going to run through the process and have a talk talk about best practice, really. Uh, well, you 
guys can go through on the edit button over here. You can use the little downward arrow. So you can either select edit, which will just open up that document library and replace the file that we're working on at the moment, or we can select edit in new instance, uh, which is my preferred choice, because it means you don't need to close down your file. What this does is it opens up a very, well, it looks like very much like a, a normal case where file. The audit one will come through to the uh, digital dashboard, but we can just jump over to our documents. And from here then, these are the documents that we saw a moment ago populating through here, okay? So what we can do is add a document here so it'll be available to everyone on, say, uh, that document library. So what I'll do is I'll add a new document. You can either right click or and go to new or you can go up to document here and you can select new this way. Um, I'm gonna select and create a new automatic document. So if we are looking at audit, maybe you'd wanna create a document that's available to everyone that allows you to see any issue that's been in the file, whether it's been completed, signed off or not. So I'm seeing all this all issues. Document type, you saw this earlier. Uh, obviously earlier on we were looking say the trial balance, uh, but we can also do is you can see there's an issues option there. Uh, the way I jump to that by the way is I just put my mouse cursor in, I type in I and then it just shortcuts me straight to the issues option. Um, there'll be a few choices here. If I just want to see everything though, then I can just leave these settings as default. Um, here's your issue type, so some of you will be familiar with these. I'm just going to leave it as all and press OK. Um, I'm probably going to drop this out of my assurance folder. I don't really want it part of my assurance pack. With these documents now in place, what I can do is I can close down my document library here. Give this a second to close down. Um, by the way, if you do compress your files to save space on the server, uh, don't, don't compress your document library, otherwise it won't be available within the list. So I'm just going to say no here. I'm going to close down this screen to refresh it. And now if I reopen that document library, what you see on my company audit now is I've got the availability to drag over this all issues document into my file. So it works really well and you can edit your company audit or your hat working papers document library, but I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, the reason being is because as and when you reinstall your templates on your machine uh, or you get a template update, then what happens is case where reinstalls are default document library which will replace this. Uh, I don't really want any of you to go through and put too much work into editing this and then find out that, okay, case for this, uh, overwritten my work with the new version of document library. So what we'd always recommend you do is create your own document library, uh, make it available on this list. Okay, so that's what we're gonna go through and do now. The first thing you wanna do is access or find out where the, the document library is stored. So I'm just gonna open up a file explorer window just to show you. Uh, first thing here is we want to scroll down to our C drive, program files, 86, caseware, um, within here we've got document library, so I'm just going to double click on my document library, and what we've got here is the three choices you saw earlier. I was going to take a copy of my default document library, so control C, control V, it's going to rename that folder, I was going to call it webinar example for today. Now, don't rename the actual document library itself within the folder. Leave that for case where to do. Okay, so I'm going to close this and minimize down. Uh, close this screen here. I'm going to open up a new instance of caseware. When you open up a new instance of caseware, what you'll have available is the rename file option over here. So you can click on rename file, use your drop down, select browse, uh, browse through to that location. So this PC, C drive, working fi uh, program files caseware and there's my document library and then what I want to do is select my webinar example select the caseware file that's within there so here's my caseware file and rename it here webinar example I'm going to select to create a new identifier to make this a completely new document library and select the rename file. Uh, before you do this, make sure that again, if you had any case view documents open or something like that, just make sure you've got the you know, case view down. My case view down the bottom relates to a separate file, so that won't be an issue. As soon as I go back into file three now, what you'll see from my document library is that I will now have my webinar example. Now, it doesn't have anything in it, uh, but what we can do is open up a new instance,
And once we're here, we could go through and create new folders and so on. Uh, we have got some sample documents on my desktop, so I was going to show you dragging those over. They work in very much the same way as we saw um, a little bit earlier on. Here are some my lease schedules. So here are some trial balance lease schedules. So maybe I want to create a group folder over here. So right click, new folder. Uh, we'll call that group docs. Press OK. And then from this sample document, maybe in that case, I want to throw, drag over my eliminating document. And we'll drag that there. There we go. So now that's within that group document folder. And then obviously you could go through, set up as many folders as you want to make sure it's nice and tidy uh, and easy for people to navigate. I was going to go through here and just drag, I'll just cut and paste these ones in. So you can, you can drag and drop, you can also cut and paste. So now back within any file, so here's a file we first looked at today. I can go to documents, make sure I'm on documents manager, and you should see that we've got our webinar, webinar example there where I can now, okay, drag in any of these documents that I might want within my file, so just drag and drop. So it's a really handy way of putting a, a collection of resources together for stuff. Uh, and it also means that if we are spending time modifying these schedules, uh, and if it's something that you're doing maybe on every file, uh, it can save you a bit of time because you only need to create that lead schedule once, throw it into a document library, and then that way you can just drag it into each engagement as you require. Okay, so that's all we've got on the a, on document library. Uh, if anyone wants any further information on that or any other questions, then feel free to put your question in the question field. We have had a few questions come in. So what I'm going to do is pass you over now to Georgie just to have a run through on those questions. So let's pass you over to Georgie. Yeah. Okay, so we've had a, a couple of questions that have come in and, and just apologies, we are over running slightly. Uh, there's lots of uh, great features in here that we wanted to show you today. Um, the questions that we've had, um, the first one is, can I round the lead schedules to agree to the financial statements? Okay, yeah, yeah, we can round the lead schedules, uh, especially if we are placing round is in our accounts document. Let me just go through and open up a file again quickly. I'll just show you the one we had earlier. Okay, so hopefully you can see my screen now pop up. Excellent. So on here, uh, maybe some of you already noticed, but if you right click on properties, um, what you had over here is, there we go the option to round. Um, so this document we can round to ones, tens, thousands, millions, billions and so on. Um, just by selecting it here, press OK. If I open up that trial balance again now, what we should see is that it's, it keeps the decimal points there. Uh, so again, you've got the zero, zero, but it removes the pence. Uh, so then that way uh, you should be agreeing to your accounts documentation. Okay. Okay, the uh, the next question is um, how can I share my document library with my colleagues? So I'm I'm assuming this is uh, if it's a perhaps a custom document library that you may have created. How, how can you share that with the rest of your team? Okay, so yeah, the what you'd want to do it depends obviously how what environment you're working within. Um, if you are working with in a Citrix environment, it's probably a lot simpler uh, to go through and share it. However, if you are working uh, on a standalone basis like my machine set up today, then what you'd want to do is simply uh, copy the uh, document library. So that's within C drive, program files 86, uh, caseware, and then we've got a document library there. So simply what you'd want to do is copy that folder for webinar ex example, uh, make it available to other users. And once they've taken a copy of it, they'll need to place it in the same path here. So program files, caseware, document library. As soon as that folder's within their installation folder, uh, then they'll have access to it within any of their engagements.
Okay, so that us we've sort of run out of time now for for any more questions. Um, if you've got any more questions, please feel free to put them in the questions uh, panel, and we'll try and include them in the Q and A document, um, which we will publish on the knowledge base along with a recording of this webinar. Um, if there are any other topics or uh, that you would like us to cover in a future webinar, uh, you will be sent a, a survey after this webinar for, for feedback. Uh, I'd be really grateful if there are any any topics you would perhaps enter those in there, and we will then put them in the schedule for the rest of 2018. Um, coming up on the webinars, we've got um, one next Friday, the 18th of May. That's our IFRS Accounts Advanced webinar, um, and that's introducing the, the IFRS Accounts Advanced template um, and highlighting the key features in there. So that may well be of interest to, to you. Um, on the 25th of May, we've got a webinar on uh, simple manual tagging for IXBRL, and that's sort of an introductory level webinar. Um, the 29th of May, we've got our corporation tax, and we'll be looking at the losses worksheet um, in relation to the EPAC CT310.04 um, EPAC release that was due to be uh, released at the end of May. And then on the 7th of June, we've got a smart engagement uh, webinar, and that's looking at the um, SRA Mercia template. And that's a cloud-based product, so uh, for those of you uh, who are using our um, Mercy Audit Advanced template on the desktop, may, you may be interested in seeing our cloud audit uh, products there. Um, so thank you very much for attending today. Um, any other questions, please feel free to pop them in the questions panel, uh, but we'll leave you to enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.